Edo State Government don't officially launch the Mabitious Regional Development Plan for 2023 to 2053. The event will mark the state 33 anniversary start for August 19th for the Ministry of Physical Planning for Benin City. The unveiling brings together stakeholders, experts and citizens will include Edo State Judiciary, Civil Service Commission, Trade Unions, Youth Leaders, Market Women Association, Edo State Business Community, among others, will do keynote presentation, exhibition and breakout session with them designed to gather feedback and make sure say everybody they involved for the state future. One of the major highlights for the events in the documentary will summarize the Edo Master Plan follow by deep presentation where the Honorable Commissioner for Physical Planning, Housing, Urban and Regional Development is okay Omar give. She come explain said the plan to transform Benin City to a one structured, serviced and resourceful smart city where Edo people fit thrive. The main to arena creation of new districts, better traffic management system, improved public transportation, infrastructure and strong focus on environmental sustainability. She come to say the vision now to make Benin City become one city where every Edo person will get opportunity to live life to the fullest. These master plans have taken um, two and a half years in preparation. And in our history, this is our fourth master plan. We first had the Midwest master plan, which is the Pulsing plan. Then we had the Dozazes, which is for Bengal State. Then in 2002, yes, we now had, they now divided the master plans into specific towns. So they wanted to deal with the major towns because, as you all are aware, the major town takes 70% of infrastructure in any funding. And also, they also carry the most population. So the thinking is, okay, if we sort out the major towns, who would actually take this infrastructure. And then we'll be able to get um, satisfaction to a majority of people. And then now concentrate on the other uh, areas of the state or the area that is being uh, planned. And so they had the Bini City Master Plan, Iwa Master Plan, Ekboma Master Plan, and Auchi Master Plan. So these master plans have been done. But if you sit today and look at them, you find out that they're not even, our level of uh, achievement is not up to 30%. Why? So these master plans were done. We had good things to do, but we didn't do them. Why did we not do them? So what we've recognized in that is that the stakeholders' participation was very, very little in the design of the master plan. So you are doing something for people that you didn't tell them. You didn't ask them, what is it you want? How, do, how is your area? What are things that mean to you? Because I can see you to that's okay, since you're from transport, maybe you need good roads. That's my own calculation. But is that what you really need? Have I taken to cognizant the topography of your area? To know the kind of thing. So I might go and do the road, and the road will be leading to nowhere. Because I didn't ask you which is the busiest area. Where are your people? All those other things I did not ask you. So I'm not saying, okay, I want to put a road from here to wherever. And the road does not mean anything to you. Because it's not a transport route for you. But when I engage you, you're able to say, mm -mm, I need you to do this other side of the bypass. So that you don't need to enter Bini. So when we are coming, we just go. I need bus park, not only in Oba Kawaii, bring bus park. To me at Oromo. So I will gather people there and then they, you'll be able to tell me. So that will be master plan. And because you, you are involved, you know that this thing is coming. You will participate. You will make sure it happens. All of all this tells you what is in the master plan. If you just look around, you see agriculture, communication. But the beauty about it is the master plan is out there. It was supposed to go through it now. One of them is 241 pages, the other is 172 pages. It's going to take us the whole day. So we didn't do that. We have the QR code for you to scan, and you can keep it and look at it later. But what we've done is also to show you where they are in these two master plans. We have two master plans, the Edo State Regional Development Plan that covers the whole Edo State, and the Bini City Master Plan to deal with Bini City as the major city we have in Edo that also has 55% of our population. So if you want to look at if you think that if you are going to talk about concerns you as far as Bini City is concerned, you know where to look. If it is the Edo State one, you know where to look. Because the Edo State now deals with each local government of the state, looking at their competitive advantage. So if I talk about Orion when you see things about Agric more, you understand? Because that is where what they are known for. When you come to Ibogoka, you see industry, trade. When you go to Edo, you see solid minerals, all of all those kind of manufacturing. So different things for different areas. But generally, things like water, power, roads, drainage, all those things are across. But there are areas that they deal with. When we talk about tourism, it goes across the whole of 
of those things. But you also know that most of the tourism, a lot of key sites are also in Benin and its environs. So those are the kind of things. So if you look at your sign that in everyone there's a page where there are some things that are basically like things like education that cut across is in the regional development plan. Health is in the regional development plan, particularly. Why there are some things that are specific to a city because it is a city. After this, we'll be launching this master plan on the 27th of August, which is the day Edo becomes 33 years. So why are we doing it on the 27th? As you are aware, a generation is between 25 and 30 years. So technically, a do state has finished one generation. What did we do with it? So now, it's time to hand over to the next generation. And as you are aware, this government is ending. So on the 27, we want to take this master plan and give them to the next generation. To say, this is what you need to go forward. This is what we have planned. So they can be part of it. So that's what we intend to do. On the, but if we do not do the briefing for you to see, we cannot present because the day we launch it, it becomes a law and is binding on everybody. The day it is launched, that is the Bible of our development. And this one comes from our social economic development plan, which was launched in 2021. And this plan is for 30 years to take us to another generation. And it has five, five years break in the middle to make sure that we review it. So for example now, if they finally find oil in this building, we'll not use it here again, we're going to demolish to look so we we'll come back and change. So it's to say fiscal plan will be here. We'll not say fiscal plan has been relocated. So, so, and so, please. You understand? So that's why, uh, because 30 years is a long time, you cannot start something. A child that is born today will not be the same. We'll only be the same in 30 years. Changes happen. So as changes happen as well, because this plan is a living plan, you keep changing it, adding it, adding it, adding it. You understand? It can even be that within 30 years, and it might be divided. It might not be one state again. We started with Midwest. You became bender. Now we are doing. Tomorrow might be something else. So when it comes, you also adjust accordingly. So if you look at what we've shown you, we've gone around everywhere. We've spoken to everybody. The one people that are here, you can confirm that we call everybody to meetings at the local level, at the state level, to say this is what we're doing. So we have these two master plans. It talks about what the aim and the vision is. And our vision of the master plan is to make Belize City a structured service resource for safe and smart city where every citizen is empowered to, with opportunity to live life to its fullest. So this is what it is. This is our plan. Because if you know from before, Belize City has always been a planned city. It has been an orderly city. If you look at pictures that they've shown us of the old Bini, the old Bini had a moat around it that is longer than the wall of China. It is actually an international monument, even though right now we have closed a lot of it. One of the problems we have now with flooding and things is because we've closed the moat. The moat has two purposes, to provide security so you can't get into the city if you're not what we want, and to drain. But all of all that has, lo has lost. So we want to come back and make sure it is uh, structured. Not only that, the roads are orbitals. If you look at Benin, there are concentric circles, all the roads. So you, that's why you say nobody gets lost in Benin. If you start at one point, if you keep going, you end up there. You just keep going. If you don't, if, and you don't stay in Benin, we didn't have roads. It's now you find out that because we did, they did not work, uh, create the roads for planning, you now find that there is a close. Because somebody uses their house to cover the road. It never used to, every road led to another road. So those ideas we want to bring back. Structured city, service city, resourceful city, safe city, and a smart city. We all use technology. And this government has already started that. We have transformed the civil service. We have started, we've laid fiber all over the state. In most local governments that you can use wireless. Here you can use anywhere. You'll be able to use your phone without um, connecting to anything. Wireless, all of that. So that it will be easy for people to do their businesses. Before now, what, if, what we are now, and we are now adding new districts to the original districts we have. So new areas are opened up. You see things like Amagba, Utesi, different, different places outside of the normal uh, outer bypass ring. Why are we doing that? If you look at the in, internal of Benin City right now, you find out that there's a lot of pressure on the infrastructure. So the, the, uh, the old Benin is not as nice as we wanted it to be. So what we're doing now is to open new areas. But not just open them the way they are, they are being opened now, where people just go open and be doing self-help. We want it to be orderly. So that these areas also have infrastructure. At the moment, if they are, but they don't have certain infrastructure they should have. No markets, no police station, no secondary school. Why? 
Not that we don't want to do them, but those lands have been sold. So now we're looking for alternatives to provide, because those are things that you must have. You must have leisure center, you must have school, you must have hospital, you must have security, you must have policy for any district to thrive. So every district will have that. So we're going to open new districts. If you look at that red line, that is like a semicircle. That is the half of the bypass. In the, in, in the plan, in the original plan, if we had continued, by now, the bypass would have covered here to this point. So that means that if you're coming from Wari, you don't need to enter Benin to go to Uboro. You just take the back and you land at Uboro and face Lagos. That is the right thing. But we've only just done this half. So this one now is part of the plan because remember this is federal. It's not state. And that kind of bypass with the is a lot of money. If we apply all the budget of this year, next year we'll not finish with what things are. So we're going to have to do a lot of lobbying to make sure that that bypass is done. Because that is what will save our roads. Most of the time, the road is not strong. It's not that the road is not strong. Internal roads are not done at the same thickness as roads that are carrying heavy traffic. So when you now put those heavy traffic on the internal roads, it puts pressure on the internal. But if the, if the bypass is there, you know that vehicles will not pass here. If you look at most developed countries, you find that vehicles will not enter from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Even if you are going to deliver things inside town, you cannot enter, except for emergency. So they allow the normal traffic to go. That is planning. So why we, another thing we want you to know from this session is that we are doing projects now to put confidence in the system. You know, before they will do the design, they say, okay, by next year we will start. Or two years later, mm -mm, we have started since last year. This, this master plan is from 2023 to 2053. So we have already done one year of it. So there are different projects we have done within the master plan. One of the projects is the Museum of West African Arts. You can see it's where the old hospital used to be. I don't know how many of you know that that was where the old palace was before the 1897 attack. That was the location of the old palace. It was after they destroyed it, the palace went to the other side. So if you look at that place, I will now have, we are now building a museum of West African art. They have come there and excavated and seen the old pots that they used. A lot of things have been put out. But we say, oh, the government took it off to give it to his friends. He's doing a, 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 a motor car. He's, no. We want to take it back to our history because that location is important to us. That is where the palace had always been for a time. So now we are going to a museum of West African art. And it will go all the way to the palace, all the way to Iku Street, all the way to Ogyame Palace, all of all that will be a cultural district. So when people come, they can come and see our history, which is rich, which is long, and which has been sustained over the years. Another thing we're doing is the Kora City. The Kora City, what we have thought about now, the expression in Benin. Let us open a new town and move people. We will, move, we will come back to places like Ogbe and start regenerating. Start putting new houses. That's what I, I, it happens in other places. When you put infrastructure in a place, the place will open. I don't know how many of you really know Lagos very well. But I remember those days when I was living in Lagos. When you are going to Victoria Garden City, we used to feel sorry for you because it was so far. But now, because of infrastructure, people are living in Egbe. You could not even call them you're living. Egbe was a village. How do you remember Morocco? How it was? Now, people do not even remember that name again. Because all those places have been regenerated, there are new opportunities, and that is what we tend to do in the old, the old Benin. You still keep the, the beauty of, the, of our tradition, but you now have new things. So when people come into Benin, we talk about our story, they are happy. That is part of our tourism plan. So also, we have the Benin Enterprise Park, which is on the way to Olobo, at Yanomo, just there, where we want to build industries. So that there we have the highest in that area is the high, our highest on-land gas deposit. I don't say it has the highest uh, on-land gas deposit in Nigeria, on-land. So we want to use it so we can make power available to them. We have already uh, gone into agreement with uh, local content um, commission and people to help us, and we're going to build the industrial park there. There's a small industrial park already in Otesi, where the Chinese are. What we're doing here is massive. So anything so that we can attract people. And you know when there's industrial and things, it does say it will grow. Is it not so? And then on this side is our Benin ports at Gele Gele, which we have already gotten the license. So now we have now engaged our partners are coming from Belgium to do it. So we don't have to go to our papa. Remember, remember that Edo State is another state. 
You cannot go to the north, south, east, and west without passing here. So how do we use that advantage? Imagine that we have a port. So nobody needs to go to Wari. Nobody needs to go to Lagos. All you need to do is to bring your thing here, and from here we now transport everybody around from Anambra, Delta, Bayelsa, Rivers. Everybody around this area will be using this airport. So this is the circulation system. How do we want to deal with movement? Most of the movement we are doing in Edo right now, most of it is by road. Okay? We're supposed to have also by rail. We're supposed to have waterways. Now we've started to do ferrying on the waterways. It's a new thing. Okay? So if I want to move heavy goods and service, uh, heavy goods, the best way to do it is by rail. Because that way they, the rail will run all night and they, car, they, carry, they can carry more than any vehicle can carry. Because you can see a rail with 25 coaches or 30 coaches and it's carrying everything. That is how they used to move our coal from this country. With the rail. So we need to find a way that we network and join the whole of the South-South so that we can move goods and services. Most of the time, the things that are planted in Edo Central, which is one of our food hubs, cannot get to the markets because we do not have, the, the roads are bad, so they will spoil on the road, pineapple will spoil, everything will spoil, so everything we are carrying. But if we are doing it by rail, if it is at night by money, it can reach the place. So we'll be able to, all these our farmers will not lose their product. We'll also be able, by the time we'll have the industrial part, can things, you understand, use different ways of storage that will make this our food last longer and take go longer for us. So all of this, we have the cargo rail, we have the district neighbor circulation, and then the city neighbor uh, circulation, the major roads and the smaller roads. Even the smaller roads, look at, at this moment, the government is doing a lot to make sure that the roads are all motorable and we can move from one point to the other. Because the time you waste traveling is money. It's money. So technically, we are losing money where our areas are not properly planned. Because if it's going to take you one and a half hour to leave your house, you have to make, it means you have to wake up very early. So your eight hours sleep, you will not catch it. And then it means that also you have to come back early. If not, you'll be on the road. So all of all that is... Uh, so this, this is what we have as our transport system. Now we're changing all of all this, bringing in new types of buses, trying to phase all of all this out, having bus packs, so that they will give, the new buses they will give to people through a scheme. So the kind of buses you see running in Benin, the type you see running abroad. We have too many Edo people abroad for us not to be like, we don't have to travel to go there. We can bring whatever is there. To us here. Then on the infrastructure, we are thinking about water. In those days, in our houses, we used to have pump. I mean, is, is that not correct? We used to have pump. People would come and fetch water. Water used to come to your house, so you open your tap. But now everybody has borehole. Borehole is not the way to go. You understand? Many times the water we drink are not treated. You see, people have time for that. Sometimes it's the connection between your water and your sewage. That's making people, the water is easy to bath. You don't know that. Other things have rubbed it. So you see every time, typhoon, typhoon, typhoon. But when you have the proper water system, well reticulated, treated water, then you'll be able to, it will also help with your well-being. So we're trying to bring back the old waterways. The Oboha water project is already one of those we're already doing. There's another one here at um, Ambico. And, and different ones at different points. So we'll discourage a boreholes. Even when we're going to have boreholes, we want people to cluster together. Not, I have my own in my house. You have one in your house. In this area, we'll cross tie you together so that the water is replicated and treated. And then the water is sustained. Because you look at, three of you might be living in the same, uh, three plus next to one another. You don't talk to yourselves. You dig your own 80 meters into the sea. Your own 55, your own 35. Somebody is drinking surface water. One of us here will be drinking surface water. Because you're not talking. You're not even asking the military what is the right thing, what is the what is the survey in this area? What is the, where will I get the best water? So you're doing your own self work and somebody because you want to save money. Okay, hundred thousand, don't worry, water in this area, don't worry. But the water you're drinking is not good. So all of all those things are part of the master plan. So sorry, one of the things we also want to do is to dam the Koba River. Dredge it. They are already doing the, the seal thing. We dredge. Make it deeper. Because if you look at that, Ikoba Bridge, you find out that sometimes the water actually comes up because it is silted. So we need to dredge, remove the sand, open it, remove the water high sand, and then dam it. And you need to create both power and water. So that's part of the plan. And then, of course, waste management. It was a beneath dirty. Beneath dirty. Plastic everywhere. 
all of all that. So you need to have new dump sites, learn, do recycling. This is all plans for recycling. So all of all this now, people will have different kinds of beans. So when you drink your plastic bottle, you don't just throw it away. You have somewhere to pack it and somebody will come and collect it. Waste is money. So those are also part of your programs. Storm water, I've talked about this. If you look at another thing that is worrying us in Edo, and I'm saying this so everybody's aware, uh, is the mining. What we are mining, I'm not talking about mining solid minerals. I'm talking about mining laterites, boro pits. They are one of the biggest problems we have in Edo. Because the boro pit license is taken from Fedra. Edo said it does not have control. So someone will just come and say, I have license, start to dig this area. It doesn't care who is behind him, whose house it is. And when he finished borrowing, he leaves it. He doesn't, he does not retain it. Secure to make sure that the soil does not collapse to stabilize it back. Small rain, it falls from there. Erosion, gully. That's what happens. So we also need to look at that. And make sure that these things do not happen like that. And make sure that our water, all our natural floor, flood discharge points are reopened. Most people are built on top of them. Seal them. So those are the kind of things that we are doing this master plan seeks to address. Environmental resource management and uh, culture. So the palace, the good street, I've talked about those. We want to bring back our tourism, um, our environment. We have very beautiful places. We have Sakoba River. We have Ipe, where we do Ogogoro. Different, different places that people can come for tourism. But how do we make that tourism to be money? So that those people do not have to run from here, travel abroad. If they are here and they are making money, they will not leave their place. Is it not so? So this is how we intend to implement it. So we have quick wins, short, medium, and long-term plans. The quick wins like this we are doing now for you to have confidence in the system. Then there are short-term plans which go for five years. There are medium-term plans and long-term plans. Because there are some things you cannot do in a short time. Like you want to build that bypass. It's not going to be one-year project. It's not going to be one year. So it's a long-term plan. But you know that you're going to face it. People will know that, okay, this is what is going to happen. You understand? If you're going to do a real system, it's not going to be overnight. You want to do the real system, you cannot connect everything once. So if I do this patch now, then do so people will understand that I. But if you want to, for example, build this kind of do this kind of building, it's a short-term plan. It might even be a quick win because this one was renovated, it wasn't built from scratch, it already existed. So it will fall within your quick win. That is our fall within your quick win. So you can see the third, gener uh, third junction; it's been revamped. It's a quick win because done quickly. So some of them make it that is short within one year. It's a quick win, but for government, uh, one year is a very short time. And you know that each, go, each uh, tenure is for four years. So even the four years is within the short term. So really, a government, if it doesn't have time, will not be able to do really long-term projects. So that's why you also find sometimes there are a lot of abandoned projects. Because the person will start it, and you go and say, that's not what I want. I want to start my own. So we don't want that as well. We want continuity to be in the system. So these are the phases. Okay. So the quick wins are written things that we've already done there. Then on the phase one, the things we want to do, start integrating the district, doing the beneath in inner, inner city. Also, remember, we are doing the aviation, we are doing new airports. In now we want to have another airport. So that we, everybody does not need to come here. You understand? All these issues we are expressing with road and all of all that, you can fly from Lagos and drop at Aoshi and go to wherever you want to go. Or from that side, come to Edo Central. We want to have our land properly done. Already, we already have a tightening. Edo GIS is already doing that. We want to start to reduce land grabbing. So people know that oh, if I buy a land, if I cannot be to you, just come and take it and sell to somebody else. So we are involved here with traditional land we to make sure that we get to the Edo of our dreams. Because the plan is to make Edo great again. And so that people will be able to live here, excel here, make their money here, and encourage other people to come here. So that is the whole essence. So what do we do next now? These are the things that we are going to do, our implementation plan. Because what we've done in the local areas is to look at their comparative advantage to make sure that if we deal with the rural areas, and let's say I am a farmer, a big farmer, and in my farm, I found power. Okay? If there are good schools there, health, so to get entertainment, house, would I come to be there? To do this. I don't listen to it. Maybe the day I will come, I want to see how the more is looking. I keep for discussion. I will be able to stay in my area and do well. And that way, economy will be, the economy of that area will be active. That's what we want to encourage. Because most of the time, because these things are not there, people ever come to be there. I believe you want to take the number of people coming. That's why I find that small are being created. We want to discourage that. 
So we know that this stage, private sector is involved, government is involved. Local government is involved. Okay? Individuals are involved. So there are different areas of the plan that different people are involved. We need money. And we cannot, though a place is a subnational, we cannot do it in isolation of the states that come to us. Because if they are not progressing, all the pressure will come to the people. So we also have to involve them. What we are going to launch, the, all the takeoff comes from the south south will be there. So they can see what we are doing and we manage our things. Because if we are doing this road, if this road ends at Ogogo and it's okay, but from after Ogogo is bad, is it going to help us? We can only, to, we can only move inside of those things. Once you leave it, you enter the trouble. So also I encourage them to say, okay, we are doing this road, we take your own from here. Let's open this area because it I benefit me and you in our trade zone. Do you understand? So that is how everything. Secretary to the State Government, Honorable Joseph Eboegbe, come on all stakeholders to contribute to the plan sources as he repeats the government's commitment to make Edo one of the leading states for Africa. The key thing though is it's a people document and really that's where the sustainability lies. Within government, in addition to the law, the, you know every year we have budgets and the budget itself is a, is a law, an aggression law. So, there, is, there are going to be procedures that would ensure that the annual budgets reflect this plan. Yes. So for starters, as you know, Mr. Abbasaki has convened his transition team. The transition report that we prepared, a section of it will have what is known by law as a medium-term expenditure framework. A recommended expenditure outlay for the first four years of the new governor. That medium-term expenditure framework will take the first phase of the implementation plan here and be brought into it. So that for each year in the first term of the new governor, the capital expenditure that they're going to put into the budget will incorporate the first phase of this plan. So there's a law backing this, that law will also support the medium term expenditure framework and naturally, if the people do not see what is being presented this week inside the MTF and the budget, then you know that uh, the, the political leadership are in trouble. So again, there are various angles to which sustainability will be guaranteed going forward. Thank you. For one talk talk session, the Honorable Commissioner of Fiscal Planning, Housing, Urban and Regional Development, Isoke Omo, Edo State Head of Service, Dr. Anthony Okubawa Esquire, Director of Media, Edo GIS, Tunde Egbere Mule, and others, come talk say. Today we started the viewing of the completed Edo State Regional Development and Bini City Master Plans. These are two plans that have been two years in making. We started these plans actually in 2021 and now they are ready to be shown to the public. The law requires that once the plans are ready, once we've done all the stakeholders engagement, once the plans are ready, we must bring the public to come and see the plans. So if there's anything that has been omitted or anything that needs to be added, it will be added. So this next one week from today the 19th to the 23rd of August, we'll be inviting people to come in here to look at the master plan. There's a documentary and they will have a question and answer session and people can now actually uh, see what the final product is. And we also want them to be involved. We cannot do these master plans on our own. Without the involvement of our people, it will not succeed. So that's why we're calling all stakeholders across the spectrum to come and engage with us so that they also understand their responsibilities within the master plan. Our plans come out from our 30 year social economic development plan, which was launched in 2021 to make Edo a destination of choice for living investment and to thrive by the year 2051. So our aspiration is to make this place the best place in the world. And what does that mean? It means that we must have physical plans that will take us to that destination. And so that's why we designed the physical plans, so that our infrastructure is dealt with. So somebody who wants to come in to do business, we've dealt with the land administration. Land is easy to get. There is water, there is light, there is road, okay? Education is here, there is health. Everything you need, there is recreation. We have tourism here. So if you come here for leisure, the tourism is there. If you come here for leisure, the hotels are there, the lounges are there. Different, different parks and gardens are planned. All of all this is to make Edo great again, to come to the Edo of our dreams. So in 30 years time, we will see the Edo that we want. So all of all these plans are there. And you know, once we are 
thriving economically. It will affect everybody. It will mean more employment, it will mean less crime and all of all that. So that is what we are here for. First, this gives us a roadmap over the next 30 years. Uh, one of the tragedies of governance in this state and indeed in this country over time has been the lack of a sense of direction. Um, government will come four years, eight years, it exists. But beyond that, what happens? And so that's why what this administration has done with this roadmap is something that is highly commendable. At the end of the day, people are able to hold government accountable you know, for what it is supposed to do for them. You know, government exists in the interest of the people. The you know, primary purpose of government as a constituency is welfare and security. So all of these have been encapsulated into a plan so that over the next 30 years people can know that oh, well, this is what we expect of government, this is what we expect of government. And then when they know, they have the power. Before they didn't know, but now they know. And I will send the document, and that's why we are popularizing the document. We want people, as many people as possible, to get to know what this document talks about. So that over time, they can hold their leaders, they can hold the political class, they can hold their governors, they can hold everyone who comes into government in any way and in any form accountable to those things that are there. It's always a concern of people. This administration that brought these beautiful ideas is living. So after now, what happens? In all of our, all of the projects that have you know, happened, is it uh, on e governance? All of them. It's always the same question: What happens after now? And like I said just now, is it first of all this government is creating a law to enable this? So it's not just anything, any document at all. It's a document that will be enabled by law. And because it's a law, when you breach it, there are sanctions. And beyond that, um, people are getting to know what is in this. And because of the huge benefits that people are going to get, you know, from this document, from getting their leaders accountable in terms of, you know, knowing what is in the document and knowing what their leaders are supposed to do, they will hold their leaders accountable. So all of this, and this sensation is going on because people didn't know about what government, you know, was supposed to do for them. Now they know. And with this sensitization and communication that is going on around this document, they will know more. And so, obviously, when they know they're empowered, because knowledge is power, they will be able to ask their governors what they have done, what they are going to do with respect to this document. As far as uh, what inspired and informed the introduction of the Benin Master Plan, it is very clear. You know, the state as a whole was not structured, was not smart, you know, and uh, the governor saw the need to plan out the city so that every community will have what we call smart you know, uh, outlay. Now, with the master plan, every community will be laid out so that you have amenities you know, spread out amongst the various communities. So it makes it easier, from what the Honorable Commission has said, it makes it easier for you to plan for the community, to plan for the people. So that is essentially what informed the introduction of the master plan. Okay, the inspiration of the master plan came by the Edo State Governor in collaboration with our Ministry of Fiscal Planning, Housing, Urban and Regional Development to ensure that the indigenous of Edo State have a better Edo, an Edo that is well planned for the next 30 years because the master plan is going to leave for the next 30 years and is a living document. So the master plan is for the Edo State indigenous to have a well-structured and a well-planned state. That's the inspiration of the Edo State Master Plan. And we also have the Benin City Master Plan, which is strictly for Benin City. Yeah. And we have the Edo State Regional Plan that is set out across the 18 local government to ensure that everyone in Edo State, all the indigenous of Edo State, enjoy Edo State, have a good infrastructure of agricultural hub and no, both the transportation, the minerals are well mined to ensure that Edo people benefit. It's also part of the mega agenda. Leader of Edo State Market Women Association, Madam Blaki Ogiame, Chemu NUJ Edo State Chapter, Festus Aleke, Comrade Okore Kinsley, and others for their talk with our Tori Prasin, Konya and say, The plan is too good. We, too, we they pray for our governor because the market women wear a day. All the market women leaders, if you bring 100 of them, 98 they go overseas. The children day. So all the 
good things when governor brings so. Then they see her when they travel. So we love good things. That's why we they pray for her. We they pray for her because the man to try. The work when don't do. Now I will Now try pass so when he bring governor can't give us. He bring go better governor can't give us. So Mr. they pray for her too. Because when he they bring God doing, no guy say Obaseki. He tell us for stage and say, the governor when he brings so, he go do pass her. And really. The man don't try, don't to try. God go the bless her. Now the prayer when we get for her. So if a baseki want come on, the better person too, when you go do pass for baseki, now we expect from her. And that's why we carry we carry cloth when we tie for waste. When we will take support, anybody when a baseki bring. I be so. I was able to see the need for us to have effective transportation, and then uh, uh, the need for us to dispose our refuse accurately unlike uh, what we see today and uh, i was able to know that uh, we are expecting a new city in a uh, state just like you have in dubai and other parts of the world so this is what we look up to and uh, the, the time frame is very okay but our wish and hope is that uh, successive government should be able to take a cue you know from what is happening today so that every government that come in place be able to implement this uh, developmental plan. But we must quickly say that it's also key for them to domesticate this plan by taking it to the Edo State House of Assembly, where they will eventually uh, pass a law that every government that come in place must implement the plan. So if this is done, I don't think there will be any problem at all. It's so significant in the sense that Edo master plan that will run for 33 years and even beyond is what Edo needs at this moment. You cannot be doing haphazard plan, planning and preparation and expect good results. That is why when a man like Obasaki came and with this project that is on, it's quite laudable because planning is what you need. If you remember the master's hierarchy, he said that planning is the first element in management. If you do not plan, how can, you, how can other elements or factors of uh, management not come in? So it's so crucial if Edo State must become what it really wants to become. It is inspired by good governance, good leadership, and the, and, and the need for him to deliver the Edo of our dream. That is what inspired our, His Excellency, the Governor, to do what he's doing in, the, in this regard, in the Master Plan of Edo. It's really wonderful, applaudable and laudable too, because every ideal society sure deserves a master plan for proper organization and structure of doing things. You know, when you have a, a master plan, it means that uh, the state, you know, is on the right pedestal and things are not going to be done like as it used to be. It calls for decency. It shows that uh, they have good organizational structure from the apex. And it's the right way to go, I must say. I believe if they can initiate it in the first place, I think uh, sustainability is not only on the side of the government, it also resides on the side of the people too, by electing credible leaders whom they can hold accountable for good delivery of anything they've initiated. As the events they go on, the government commitment to transparency and inclusivity don't receive plenty of praise as stakeholders they confidence say Edo State go make significant progress for the next 30 years thanks to the comprehensive master plan. The five-day event go end on August 23, while the master plan launch go shelly on August 27 for Vito Wife for Creative Hope for Benin City. Make could not forget say, as we see them, now so we they talk them, we not they take blame. From Benin City, Ekata Ojiseli, TMC TV News.